All right, Brochim Abayim, welcome everyone. Uh, this was an interesting article on religious, religionnews.com that kind of piqued my attention about a phenomenon that they called religious but not spiritual. And they actually, the article, I'm not going to read the whole article now, but the article began with the story of a from woman who admitted that she didn't really, she wasn't really sure if she believed in all the things that Judaism requires her to believe, but she lives a Torah lifestyle because she believes it's the best lifestyle. And there are obvious problems with that, in, and, and even though the same article discusses people from other communities, I want to address this issue among people within our own community and within the realm of halacha, of Jewish law, our own community. So I'm, if you're new to the channel, I'm Rabbi Yitzchak Kolakowski. People call me the Koblenzer Rav or the Koblenzer Rebbe uh, in honor of my ancestor, the Chavos Yor, who was the Rav in Koblenz uh, back in the 1600s, pre-Hasidic, but uh, I like the way it sounds. And uh, I'm, I, I share usually every week various Hasidic and other Jewish uh, Torah content as well as various commentaries like this one. So welcome to the channel. Please uh, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, hit the bell button if you enjoy our content. Appreciate it. So uh, this was my comments on this on Facebook today. What do people have to say about this article? I would say halachically speaking, Dvarim Shebelev Enam Dvarim. You daven three times a day, you fulfill the requirements of belief. If you don't feel it, it doesn't matter from a basic halachic requirement. Although it is good, meaning to quote unquote feel it, if it helps one maintain a halachic lifestyle. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry, I don't edit out sneezes. Uh, if I know it's coming, I'll pause before I. Uh, some folks ask why I don't make the full screen videos. One of the things is. If, it's dark out right now, so if I would make the full screen video right now, you, you wouldn't see anything anyway. So our friend Shmuel Goldberg, he says, I understand that the Torah does not regulate or deal with belief, but behavior. So it doesn't matter if you don't feel it. Judaism never educates us about feelings, but behavior. Doing the act is all that's required. Even an atheist could fulfill it. Yes and no, because feeling it, 100%. You don't, there's no requirement about feeling in the Torah. Absolutely zero halachic requirements to feel anything. But to profess a belief, there is, and to engage in actions that demonstrate one's feelings, and to engage in activity that promotes certain feelings, certainly are required in Torah. The Torah requires us to believe that God exists, to believe that God is one. That is clear from the Torah. It requires us to love God and to fear God. But are those necessarily emotional? Or rather, for lack of a better term, not really transactional because there's nothing, there's no transaction that's made with God. But actionable love, an actionable fear, meaning that you express your love of God by fulfilling his positive commandments, and you express your fear, fear of God by avoiding sin and repenting from sin uh, if one falls. Uh, so an atheist can't do that. The only thing is what is halachically considered to be an atheist. Let's go to something maybe a little bit more controversial. People know my friend Rabbi Asher Meza uh, has gotten some criticism because he has expressed doubts about one of the dogmas that Maimonides teaches, which is um, the, uh, the resurrection of the dead. And since that is a dogma in Judaism, we have to believe in it, right? That's one of the Yud Gimelikrim. And Rabbi Meza says he's not sure if he does. So the, the issue is as follows. Does that make him a heretic? Because if someone 
denies the resurrection. He's a heretic, just like if he denies God's existence or if he denies that um, that God is one, if he believes that there is more than one God that is in the category of the Creator, that is worthy of worship. Uh, those things are prohibited. And if one engages in acts of worship to any created being, uh, and there, again, there's a difference between worship and veneration, we can discuss that. But Maimonides sees veneration as a slippery slope that could lead to worship and denial of the Creator. So these are part of the issues that we could discuss here and there. So this question of a person uh, denying the resurrection, at what point does one become a heretic? And the answer is very simple, actually. Because, like we said, Devarim Shabalev Enim Dvarim. Words in the heart are not words. So words of the mouth are words. And the word Dvar means not only a word but thing. So words in the mouth are things. And words in the heart are not things. So therefore, uh, my dear friend Rabbi Meza, like all of uh, like every pious Jew, three times a day, and when there's Musa, four times a day, and if he's leading prayers, could be you know, five or six or seven times a day. Says the words, Baruch Atoh Hashem Mechaye Hamesi, or Mechaye Hameti. Blessed art thou, O Lord, who revives the dead. So by virtue of the fact that one at least gives lip service to the concept of the resurrection, he is therefore, at least at that moment, not a heretic. As opposed to the major change, I think the, one of the most problematic changes that the reform movement brought away from Judaism was changing the liturgy from Mechaye Hamesim to Mechaye Es Hakol, at Hakol. Or Chaye Olam, or something like that, different girsos, I guess, different nuschos. And that crosses a line. Even though it's not a tacit denial of the resurrection of the dead, nor does the reform movement prohibit one to believe in the resurrection. Essentially, the reform movement does deny the resurrection, which would make it a heretical sect, probably more than a lot of their other practices. Uh, it's more the issues of their beliefs, and there's statements of their beliefs or lack of or their change to the liturgy to reflect their change in their belief. And so that's what makes the reform movement heretical. Although in the end a lot of reform Jews do come to Kever Yisrael and are not cremated and the, going to Kever Yisrael having a proper Jewish burial actually seems to be, at least at the end, an expression of a belief and a hope in the resurrection, as opposed to those who are cremated. Particularly those who are cremated, be not, uh, you know, uh, of their own will. You know, not, we're not talking about, you know, Holocaust victims who were cremated. We're talking about people who were uh, who made a conscious decision to reject the traditional Jewish burial and apparently reject the doctrine of the resurrection. I remember there was a fellow in our shul, in our community, he didn't come to shul so often. Every now and then he'd come to shul. He grew up from, and he 
he said he doesn't believe in God. Uh, and this fellow uh, showed up in shul one time when there were people there who were pretty strict about not accepting the Chalalei Shabbos as part of the Minyan. Which is a halacha, even though there are various heterium that that, exp that qualify that. But in general, we say that someone who publicly desecrates the Sabbath uh, would have the halachic status of a heretic and would not be able to be included in, in the prayer quorum. They're basically not considered to be Jewish. They're not Gentiles, but they're non-Gentiles, but not Jews, until they repent. And the curious thing to me was that these other people, very from people, asked the atheist, the self-proclaimed atheist, to daven for the Amud, to lead our... Not only did they count him in the minion, but they honored him with leading Musaf. How could that be? And I didn't want to argue with him. I don't think it was even my choice that at that point. It wasn't, you know, I'm not the rub of the shul. I'm the assistant rabbi in the shul. I don't think the rub was there that day. Um, but I have to go al dasa kahal. Right? It wasn't, wasn't something that I would have wanted. And so I have to try to figure out how to be melamed schus and, and be more heter afterwards, subsequently. And the way I figured it was, at the moment that he's saying the words, Baruch Ato Hashem, he can't be an atheist. He knows what he's saying. He knows what the words mean. And it's similar to what Rav Avadi Yosef paskins about the Mechal Shabbos for Hesia. Again, if someone recites our Sabbath liturgy, he makes Kiddush, he prays in the synagogue, or he does both, even if he is violating the sins of violating the Sabbath, for which he may very well be liable to the death penalty under uh, the circumstances of a, a proper Sanhedrin. Nonetheless, and, and with the Adam and Hasra and everything else, with witnesses and, and warnings and all the other things, but nonetheless, Chacham Avadia Paskin, which I think was, uh, it to me makes, uh, with all the respect, more sense than other Piskei Halacha from other Gedolim, from the Ashkenazic Gedolim, that had different approaches to the question of including non-religious people in a minion. Chacham Avadia's approach said that if someone says the words liturgically, and one of his Talmidim said to me with the, the idea that he's understanding Baruch HaTu Hashem Mekadesh HaShabbos or even just Baruch Mekadesh HaShabbos like we say Baruch HaMafil Ben Kodesh Lechol then such a person does not have the din of a Mechal Shabbos before Hesia and so according to Chacham Avadia his wine is kosher and he counts for a minion with a big Kiddush that's opposed to, for example, uh, Rav Moshe, uh, Rav Moshe Feinstein, who was of the opinion, a very interesting opinion, that a person could be a kofer be'ikr, but still count for a davar sheva kedusha, because, uh, which also he brings, uh, he brings a good uh, argument to this idea. To, to support his idea because if uh, in order for it to be for someone to die as a martyr and for it to be considered to be Kiddush Hashem there has to be a minion present and he said even if the minion are, are all they're Jews, born Jews not Gentiles as I would say um but they're all uh, Yisrael Mumer, they're all heretics, they're all atheists, it's still considered Kiddush Hashem Barabim. And so what, what Rav Moshe says, 
is that it wouldn't count for Tefillah and Betzibor, but you'd be able to liturgically say everything that we say, um, you know, the, the Kedusha and the Kaddish and the Baruch and the Kriya Satoru. He had a question about Chazor Sashatz, but he said what he could do is just say, not Al Derech Chazor Sashatz, but only just just say the, the Shemona Esrei out loud with the Kedusha, or make a, a Oiche Kedusha, um, whichever it is. Um, and that's, that's Rav Moshe's Pesach. Uh, and and Elu Ve'elu differently Kim Chaim, they're not really contradictory, because Rav Moshe is not saying that, that they don't have a din of Michal Shabbos. And so therefore, he's only qualifying what the din of Tfila of a minion is uh, as far as Tfila Betzibor and t- like a Shtikla Brisker tur between Tfila Betzibor and a Davrish of Kedusha. Um, and so, therefore, of course, these same Koifrim, the same heretics, their wine would be Yayin Nesech, and they're not counting. For a minion, as far as Tefillah but Sibor, they're only counting for a minion for Davar Shem Kedusha. So, interesting, interesting ideas. Um, but then the question is, what about someone who lives a totally Torah lifestyle and recites our liturgy? It's a Shomer Shabbos but has either heretical beliefs or what we would call deus cosmos, false beliefs. So, uh, heretical beliefs would be uh, polytheism as opposed to henotheism, which is different. Um, but, But actual polytheism uh, that there's something that's stronger than God, or or that there's something that's co-equal to God, uh, or that there is no God, of course, is even worse. Um, or who engages in actions of worship in a henotheistic uh, rubric. Also problematic. Just the question is, what is worship and what is not worship? Is is asking for a bracha worship or not? Um, you know the whole question of of baruchuni v'shalom, right? That we say in shalom aleichem. Can you ask the angels for a blessing? How is that any different than asking a person for a blessing? Well, can you ask a person for a blessing? Well, we see it in scripture that people bless people. What is that? What, what does that even mean? Um, all these things are obviously complicated issues uh, that have many things to discuss. Beyond that, uh, but but Shmuel is incorrect here. Uh, an atheist is not fulfilling Torah, but the question is: Is the person an atheist? If he is fulfilling Torah, halachically speaking, we're not mind readers, and so God will judge someone's theology. Although we know, if someone's theology comes out of a mistake, there's a general concept that God is merciful, even when it comes to idolatry. We see that it says, the Navi Malachi says, "Mi Mizrach Shemesh et Mavo Gadol Shmi Bagoyim." Omar to Hashem Svakos, that from the, I, I don't know why my pronunciation got so weird right now, I'm a little tired, but anyway, that from the rising of the sun to the setting thereof, great is my name among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Which is an idea that's expressing that really all polytheism is actually henotheism, which is not true, um, but it's an expression of s- some sort of a henotheism. When I say henotheism, I mean that there is one supreme God and 
there are other spiritual beings that might be called gods or Elohim or something else, but they are not in the same in the same category as the Creator, uh, which pretty much every religion believes. Meaning, we believe that there is one supreme God, but then we also believe there are angels and demons and other beings. which are really more similar to us than they are similar to God, to the Creator. But they might be called Elohim in Hebrew or gods with a little g in English, just like judges are called Elohim. There are human beings that are called Elohim. And, you know, colloquially speaking, when we would refer to these things, uh, when we refer to the Almighty, we would say Elohim, if it's not in a liturgical sense. To separate between Elohim, between Hashem Hu Hu Elohim, and and it's Hu Hu Elohim, not Heim. So that Elohim is singular because it's Hu, and then Elohim Achirim, which are plural, two different things, totally different things, not even really anywhere in the same category. And really what Elohim means is, the, the gematria is Hateva, so it's just the forces of nature. It's nothing really that difficult to believe in. Now, other uh, polytheistic religions have similar ideas. You know, certainly the Hindus have the idea, but there are many different sects of Hinduism. But those who believe in the one supreme Brahman that is ineffable and, and, and and not able to be explained, and all the others, the way that Alan Watts would explain it, are angels. But nonetheless, they have cults to all these various quote-unquote angels, and so that would still be prohibited. It's a sin, you know, to worship these angels. But then again, what is where is the cutoff between worship and veneration and fellowship? I would say saying Borchuni B'Shalom is not even veneration, it's only fellowshipping with the angels. Um, as opposed to, uh, you know, going to a kever of a tzaddik, veneration of saints, that, that's veneration, but it's not a vodazora, it's not worship. Um, and then we only work, uh, but if someone brings a sacrifice, or, or bows to a statue, or does these other prohibited activities that are prohibited in halacha, that is the point where the violation, uh, even if theologically it's not problematic, but the action becomes problematic. I mean, it could be that the theology is, it's out of the ordinary, but it's not necessarily prohibited, but the action is what be, is what crosses the line and you know essentially you know if someone brings sacrifices to some of these demonic forces you're giving them your energy or the energy from the animal you're feeding them just like you know you're feeding you know anybody else so then the question is who do you want to feed do you want to feed your children do you want to feed your pets do you want to feed your livestock do you really want to feed something that is maybe not something that you want to hang around because how are you feeding them? Maybe you're feeding them, maybe they see you more like livestock. But again, now I'm getting into the more mystical. I'm trying to keep this rational, and I've gotten more rational in my old age. Not that I'm so old, I'm only 40. But I've gotten more rational over the years than I used to be, but I still wear a strangle on Shabbos. Um, I don't think there's really that much of an argument between the rational and the mystical. Uh, they're, they're, for the most part, we, we have more in common than, than separates us. And the main thing, of course, then, is, is the halacha. But then, you know, in this article, so to actually not believe in God, that's a problem, right? Because it's a mitzvah to believe in God. But we we prove that we believe in God because we say Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad you know 
because we say because we say Baruch Atu Hashem Elokeinu Melech Haolam, and so liturgically we fulfill, you know, Baruch Atu Hashem Noisei Na Torah. You know, so we believe that the Torah is Min Shemayim. Even the Reforms say that. <laughs> I think you know they 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 get up and they say they say the brachas, uh, uh, they make aliyahs. And they say, even though they claim they don't believe it, but it's still part of their liturgy. You know, which is, again, that's, that's where the other heresy came, was the humanists. And they call it humanistic Judaism, which to me is, is totally anathema. That's worse than the reform. Because they are atheists. And they said they can't keep a liturgy that they don't that they're just giving lip service to and don't actually believe in. But the point of the liturgy is to inculcate us to believe in it. It's not It's not natural. I mean, it's natural in the ultimate sense of what we're supposed to be. But it's not natural in the sense of basic human nature to believe. We have to work on ourselves to get to what we were designed to be naturally. And that's part of the, that's the whole idea of Judaism. Is that we're, we're working toward that goal. And it's not something that's just given to us because of blind faith. It's something we have to work with. Something we have to struggle with. Something we have to fight with, within ourselves. And we engage in that battle. By standing up on our feet three times a day. Even when we don't feel like it. And we're in a rush. And we, and we... We're not even sure. If, I mean, for me, I, I, it's hard for me to understand this not believing part, because I, I find the Jewish apologetics. I'm saying the rationalist Jewish apologetics, the Maimonidean apologetics, the the Rav Yehuda Levi Kuzari apologetics, Rav Victor Miller, I find their apologetics to be very, very convincing, and I still do to this day. One of our other friends was also a Hasidish Yingerman, not a Yingerman, a Zeda, I think maybe an Elta Zeda. But he said, you know, this is an interesting question, and, and the popularity of Kabbalah has made problems, and there are problems. Because if it's just about feeling and it's not halachic, that's not what God wants. You know, you're going to go and, and, and sit in the kumzits, uh, and, and it's. And it's things are going on that are you know, it's mixed seating or something and oh I feel so spiritual that's not, that's not spiritual that's just that's just hormones, you know that's not spirituality now you can use hormones for spirituality in a kosher way, you know and, and, the, and, and the thing is it's difficult to do that because my mutakim, right yimtaku Right? The stolen waters are sweet. When you do things that you're not supposed to do, you might feel more than when you do the right thing. You know, the same thing that the one for Darbun or our Acher that I'm trying to be a Shtikla Rebbe Mayor to, he told me he feels more spiritually fulfilled with his Avodah Zara than he did Davening. And he was, and he was a big Ovid. And he didn't feel it. But you don't have to feel it. That's not... That's not the purpose. That's very short-sighted to think that the whole purpose is just how you feel. The question is, what are you doing for the world? And the thing is, I don't know. I know that the Eden and Williamsburg, they're doing a lot for the world. They're big bali tzedakah. They're big bali chesed. They'll take the shirt off their back to help someone else. Not only another Jew, anybody. And they and they're not looking for, uh, they're not looking for COVID. They're not looking for respect. They're not looking for PR, right? It just came out now, right, that the Satmar Meisters was sending food for the soldiers in Eretzol, and the uh, and and they took the article down. Why? Because they don't want this type of PR. They want it to be l'shem shemay. It's, and people are like, oh, because they're embarrassed because the No, it's not because they're embarrassed. It's because, like like I said, 
my Hungarian Zeta, whose parents came from Satmar, and he and he wasn't a Satmar Chosid. He was, he was America Hana guy, but my Zeta all of a shalom. He is a Chosigalenu. He was a big Balchesed. I said it over the other day. And what did he do? He said. Um, they, they wanted to honor him in the shul. You know, like the, the joke goes, the kid in Hebrew school, he learns that one of the Ten Commandments, the Fifth Commandment is, Thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, I don't have to. The synagogue honored them last year. They wanted to honor the Zayda. And, and he said, he told the Rav, who's a big tzaddik, he said, he said, you, you, uh, you give me any covet, I'm going to stop doing all the stuff I do. I'm not like that. I got to do tshuva. I got to be more like my Zadie. But anyway, that's 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 what we're talking about here. That's what we're talking about here. Um, and that's what it's really about. Are we making the world a better place? And yes, we are. Even the most cloistered Haredim and modern Orthodox and so forth are making the world a better place. And the thing is, is if, if someone is living properly liturgically and halachically to the best of their ability and they do tshuva when they mess up, if they have some improper beliefs, whether about religious Zionism or in Yadim about Mashiach or different other things, and it's not violating the Yud Gimel Ikrim, it's very hard to say that such a person is a heretic. They're still part of the Klal Yisrael. They have to do tshuva from the things that they're doing wrong. But, like we said before, that, that Rabbi Nachman said, the whole world is made in the Machlaikas between the Tzadikim. That, that's where there's a Cholol Aponoi. That's where the vacuum exists for the world to exist. So anyway... I think, and 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 in the, and then there, right? Moshe Rabbeinu can go with shtika and with anigan and schlep the people out of their atheism, even out of the second type of heresy. Watch my uh, my uh, series on 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 Timuran uh, So Hashem should help us that we should be zeiche to do the things we're supposed to do, believe the things we're supposed to believe, and if we're zeiche, we can also feel the things we're supposed to feel. But if we don't, don't think that means that you're far away from God. If you're doing the right thing, you're close to God. You believe the right thing, and you, do the, and you do the right thing because you believe it, you're close to God. Even if you're not feeling so excited about it. And the, the truth is, if you're not feeling it, it's because you're not putting enough work into feeling it. I know I'm not. I know I should be. I've gotten very lazy. You know, I used to go to Shalashudas, my Tzimar Zilberberg, and I used to go and daven at the Bonus Yisrael and told us Avram Yitzchak, and I felt something. And I still feel that called the Mamadaka. That still small voice. It's still there. I don't know if I could, uh, you know, go through a whole a Shalashudas Bayer to Meyer Zilberberg, like maybe once in a while. You know, I remember I went to Uman and I, w- and I davened by Bitch Meyer Morgenster. And other people were like, wow, you're davening? I was like, you go every year. I'm only going once. I'm going to do it this way. Right? And I dove in there and uh, had a very simple suda, did nothing fancy, nothing crazy, you know. Some, I think I just had like a kazayas of, 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 you know, stale bread. And that was the suda for Shoshana. But I was in Uman. And the interesting thing was, I was by Rebbe Nachman, I was by the Baal Shem Tov, I was by the Berdichever, who I have a big Kesher to, and my family is a Kesher to. And, I, and, and where, did I, where did I feel the most disorders? was by Rebbe Pinchas Karatzer. I don't know, what's that? 
found out, you know, I got married and my wife is a Gioris, she is a Gioris, and on the best of Ben Acher Ben from Pinchas Cards, and then my second child was born on, this, on the yard side of Pinchas Cards. Who knows? Who knows where the connections go? Anyway, I know, I remember my wife and I, we both, we went to, we went to the Zayda, the morale. I didn't know it was an anical from the morale at the time. That was, I felt something. I can't deny what I felt, and I can't deny how convincing the, uh, the apologetics are. So I, I have a very hard time when I read these stories about people who are from and they don't feel it. But what I'm saying is it doesn't matter. But there's a difference between feeling and a difference between dogmatic belief. We do have to believe in the dogmas. But what I'm saying is if you struggle with the dogmas, which I don't, but if you do, as long as you express the dogmas verbally, that's all that matters. You, you've shown yourself as a believer. And you can see the face of God. And I'm a believer. You see, you see the Shechina. I'm a believer. Couldn't leave her if I tried. That's how we got to be. We gotta, we gotta become a believer, but emuna means something that really is proven, right? We talked about that yesterday. So we should be zeichel, like we talked about yesterday, to that type of emuna that goes to all our machavarim, and 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 that it, it and it's in our seichel also, and and then you, it's 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 rational, and it's emotional. It's everything. And in that way, we'll be blessed with all kinds of good things. Uh, all right. Well, thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment. And, and we'll see you later. All right. I love you. Take care. Be well. But the, but, uh, the point I was saying, the other younger man said, about the Kabbalah. And that's the problem with the Katshats. It's the problem with these groups that go away from... You know, and everything's about, oh, I want to go to a kumzitz. And I want nothing wrong with it. I'm not saying there's something wrong with the kumzitz if it's, if it's kahalacha. There's something wrong with the kumzitz is boys and girls together. You know, I, I understand you're trying to be a of people. You have NCSY. All right, so you put boys and girls together for Kirib, but the, you should be teaching them that this isn't right. You know, it's, it's a problem, but, it, but it's the way to get them through the door. I understand all that. But... The real thing is, you open up the Gemara and Shor Shagona Ashor. That's the real spirituality. And the thing is, I remember Rabbi Bartzadok said he, he saw, I think, from from um, from the from the Minchas uh, Kohen and Minchas I don't remember. He said, you have there's there's a fire that's Bright on the outside and dark on the inside, that's the fire of Tumma. That's what you see in the cults, in the Voidazara. That you get excited, but inside it's empty. And then you have the fire that's black on the inside and it's white on the inside. That's the fire of Torah. You look, Shor Shagonach, what is it? This is spirituality? Kol Nidre, this is spirituality? You get into it and you see, yeah, this is the real thing. This is the real thing. This is the Emmas. All right, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like. But if you don't feel it, it doesn't matter. You still got to do it. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment. And we'll see you all later. Oh, I just uh, it didn't turn off. How do I turn this off? This one?